the 2016 Ford Fiesta ST. If you were ever looking for the very definition of a pocket rocket, you are looking at it, and without question, this is one of the best bang for your buck performance deals of all time. I'm Jay, and welcome to this latest episode of Car Buzz Unboxing Reviews, and I wanna thank Future Ford for uh, letting us come on down and film today. So the Ford Fiesta ST, now every uh, performance enthusiast driver is aware of this car, but I just want to take the time to show it to just about anybody else who doesn't know about it, how awesome this car is. And you know what? Here's what it costs. Just about $21,000. And like I said in the very beginning there, this is one of the best all around performance cars you can buy today within that price bracket. And in fact, there's not really any other car this inexpensive and well it, nothing is really that much fun to drive for this price now you have to understand what it, this just looks like from the outside and the inside is a base fiesta hatchback and that's okay but it's what's under the hood is where it really counts and i'll get to the engine more in uh, just a few minutes but what's interesting is that the Ford Fiesta, just the, the standard car, it's actually been around since 1976, and it's one of the most popular cars Ford has ever sold overseas, but the Fiesta really didn't even come to the U.S. until the sixth generation, which is what this one is, and, well, it's just become really popular as well, and in fact, a brand new Fiesta, the seventh generation, is going to be uh, debuting in the very near future. But step inside the Fiesta ST, again, it's based off the current 6th generation Fiesta sedan and hatchback. Now, what you need to know about the Fiesta ST is that it only comes with a 6-speed manual that you see right there. That's right, there is no automatic transmission offered. And that, I mean, that goes straight to Ford Performance for like, man, you... You guys just nailed it here. You intended for this car to be for the performance driver and... They did it, they actually built it. Now these seats are, are actually standard the, with the ST logo on them. Now you can get an optional package for the uh, ST Recaro seat package for an extra $1,995. And those are Recaro sports seats, they're more bolstered, more supportive. And I think for about two grand, yeah, they're worth it considering the base price of this car is about $21,000. You can't really beat that. Now I think my only real maybe complaint with the Fiesta ST is that its interior is, aside from the seats, um, really isn't different enough from the base Fiesta. And I would have liked to have seen maybe some more, I don't know, Fiesta ST stylish traits throughout. Same goes for the rear seat, and it's nice. It's, it's, it's spacious enough. Uh, it can easily fit two adults back there. Uh, three is just, uh, would be just pure punishment in my opinion. You had that stop start, uh, I'm sorry, start stop button there. And the overall dash layout, yeah, if you've been in the standard Fiesta, this is very similar. This is what they call charcoal black with contrast STI badges. There's only about two other interior color choices that you can get here as well. And you have a six and a half inch touch screen with uh, Sync 3. Now, Sync 3 replaced my Ford Touch for 2016, and uh, it's a huge improvement over my Ford Touch. And I've reviewed Sync 3 in other brand new Ford products, and I really don't have any problems with it. Uh, my Ford Touch, I didn't really like. In fact, Ford CEO was uh, <laughs> not a big fan of it either. But uh, finally, Sync 3 is where Ford's infotainment system uh, needs to be. Now, if you want, this is the standard system, but if you want to get it with uh, Sony HD audio with navigation Sync 3, that's going to cost an extra $795. So basically, if you want navigation, that's an extra $795. But then again, if you have a mobile app such as Waze, I think that can do the job just fine. You just have your base climate control here, nothing fancy schmancy. But then again, in a way, I wouldn't mind it if Ford had done a few more interior upgrades to the Fiesta ST to differentiate it more from the base models here. However, I'm afraid that actually, that could have increased the price somewhat too. So, you know, you just can't win them all. Ah uh, yes, six speed manual, 
no automatic here. If you don't know how to drive a manual, you can do one of two things, not buy the Fiesta ST or learn how to drive a manual. Now, some other really nice interior features uh, that you get is the uh, driver's seat manual lumbar control, leather and aluminum uh, trim shift knob that you saw there, leather wrapped steering wheel, rear dome lamp, uh, ST bright metal sill plates, tilt steering, and uh, push button start there as well. There's also ambient lighting inside, and if uh, you can get a glance at it, there's aluminum sport pedals too. Again, they don't Ford performance guys. They just, they knew how to package this car right. So let's talk safety here. Now, it's got the standard dual front airbags, driver's knee airbag, front seat mounted side impact airbag, side curtain airbags, tire pressure monitoring system, four wheel disc brakes, an ABS system. You know, all the standard base stuff that you're gonna need in a modern uh, a car today. And there's very few extra features that you can get on the Fiesta ST. Mostly they're just sort of add-ons, like a black stripe going across the hood and, uh, and the roof there. But overall, what you see is what you get. So how does it drive? Well, just to be clear, first and foremost, it is very predictable driving behavior, and that is a good thing. A few features that it has to allow that predictable driving behavior is a twist beam rear axle. It's, that actually reduces understeer and is designed to help increase rear roll stiffness and the ST specific tune suspension. And now this car also has a lower center of gravity and it's lowered compared to the base model Fiesta and it helps increase overall response and stability. And as far as the ST uh, tuned suspension, it's actually a brake based torque vectoring system that improves agility in the corners and the springs and shock absorbers also help to increase road drip. Out real fast here, take a look at the uh, rear seat space. Yeah, it's comfortable enough for two adults. Not a whole lot of leg and knee room, but it, it's satisfactory. But again, three full size adults back here, that's punishment. Now, you also get an electric power assisted steering that helps to deliver light and responsive steering at low speeds, and the West steering assists at higher speeds for a better feeling of control. Cargo space here, again, five door hatchback only. You cannot get the Fiesta ST as a sedan. You get 10 cubic feet of cargo space plus 60 40 split folding rear seats. So what I really like about the Fiesta, Fiesta ST is the fact that, yes, it is such a great driving car, but it's also perfect for daily driving. You know, say for example, a Mazda MX-5 Miata, awesome car, I love it, but it's got a small trunk, it's only two seats, it's, it's limited what it can do here, but look at this. Plenty of cargo space there with those uh, rear seats folded flat. This is a great daily driver. You can also do uh, more long distance road trips in it as well. Plenty of cargo space. I think for most people, you really don't need much more cargo. Okay, under the hood because this is where the magic is at. You got a turbocharged 1.6 liter inline four with 197 horsepower and 202 pound feet of torque. Like I said, it's paired exclusively to a six speed manual that sends power straight to the front wheels. And this engine has a lightweight all aluminum construction too. Again, reducing weight is key here and Ford invested the money to make it happen. But let's, let's, uh, let's give it a listen here. All right, so I want to talk to you about some of the performance specs here because they're quite impressive for such a little and fairly inexpensive car. Zero to 60 miles per hour in seven seconds flat. Zero to 100 miles per hour in 17.6 seconds. Top speed is electronically limited to 143 miles per hour, but you can do the standing quarter mile in 15.2 seconds at 93 miles per hour. Very impressive numbers. And fuel economy, also impressive. 26 miles per gallon in the city, 33 on the highway. Very, very good. Total weight, eh, just under 2,800 pounds. Now this car here, it's uh, painted shadow black. It's got these 17 inch ebony black aluminum wheels. 
just a, a very sharp looking car even though yes it, it's at its heart it's a fiesta hatchback but i like things uh details like this is so like the uh, dual exhaust chrome tips here and if you look up front uh it has a black mesh grill right here it's it's the grill and the rear design are different from the base Fiesta. And if you also notice out, out back, there is a rear spoiler too. This front end, it's kind of similar to what you see on the uh, larger Ford Focus ST too. This car's a bigger sibling. Notice also the wide wheel arches and the body color side rocker moldings, the body color front and rear fascia, lower extensions too. Yep, there's that rear spoiler there. Really like that a lot. In fact, the uh, engine system uh, features a sound and uh, symposer box. Basically what that does is that it captures engine generated frequencies from the intake system and transmits them to the passenger compartment. So it's not exactly fake engine noises, but they are certainly augmented. So let's talk pricing. Like I said, base price, just under $21,000. There's not a whole lot of options you can get here. I do recommend the uh, ST Recaro package for $1,995. You get those Recaro sports seats. Uh, if you want navigation, about another uh, $795. What's the competition? Well, the, you got the Fiat 500 of Barth, the uh, brand new Nissan Sentra Nismo. I just did a review of that as well. Be sure to check it out. And if your budget allows, you can upgrade to the Ford Focus ST, which starts off at around $25,000. So tack on about another four to five grand for that. There's also the Mini Cooper S and the JCW, but that's a little bit more expensive. And I would also toss in the Subaru WRX. Now that starts at closer to $30,000 and it has all wheel drive standard, but uh, I did a review of that car as well and I'm a big fan of it. So I always like to give it a shout out. So what do I like here? Well, this is just perhaps one of the best all round performance cars for those on a budget. It's got a stable chassis and it's just very overall predictable driving behavior and it's such a great training car and um, it's a training car for those who are making their first performance car purchase and it's also really easy to park and the practicality of a five-door hatchback you know you just can't ignore that now what don't i like well as i mentioned earlier the, the interior it's just a, in my opinion too similar to the base model fiesta um, i would have liked to have seen ford somehow make this interior a little bit more unique. And the standard seats, they aren't the best for the ideal driving position. That's why I recommend going for the optional Recaro Sport seats. But the bottom line is here is that the Fiesta ST, it just urges drivers, new and old, to push the limits while still keeping all the occupants safe. It's an awesome value, and it's one of the best affordable driver's cars on sale today. But I'm out of time, everyone, so thanks for watching. If you have any more questions for me, just leave them in the comment section below. Any suggestions for future reviews, also leave those in the comment section and be sure to subscribe to the Carbuzz unboxing YouTube channel. So until my next review, I'll see you all next time.